Hi, Camilla. Hi, Val. Hi, Stephen. How are you? Hey there. Good, thank you. Nice to see you. Okay. I think we have YouTube going as well. I had a tutorial with Ariana today. <laughs> Smoothing out the bumps. <laughs> well, it won't be that far. I mean, it won't be that far off into the future when we can have meetings in person again, or exactly. at we'll least be, as an option. So we'll be talking about that tonight. Uh, yep. I mean, it's at Sally Rhodes Memorial. That was the first time I met Camilla and the first time I met Tom. And I've been oh. on the board for more than a year or about a year or something. So it's. <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's really cool. And at first I didn't even recognize Stephen. It was Walked just up to so Tom and... to see someone in person. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, Sue. Hi, all. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi. So um, not only do we have the Zoom meeting open, we have the live stream going as well, just so everyone knows. Okay, cool. Will Tom be able to attend? Have you heard that? He, he texted me and said he's going to try in about five minutes. That was probably two or three minutes ago. We had to stay up late, I guess. Yeah, I was wondering what time it must be in Italy. One o'clock. Oh, your garden looks so beautiful. I just passed by today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just, I tried not to gawk too much. Oh, you can gawk all you want. Thank you. <laughs> when it gets this hot out, it's just so hard to go out and, and weed. It's like, oh. <laughs> I didn't see any weeds on the flower. Oh. <laughs> it looks like Tom has joined us. Oh, wonderful. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah, it seems to be working. You. Howdy. Yeah. There's the camera. Hey. There we go. It's working. Good. I'm hey. just going to do one thing. Already tomorrow where he is. Yeah. Did any of you get a waiting room notice? No. Because no. you just popped right in. I didn't have to do a thing. Yeah. OK. That's good to know. Hello, everybody. Hey, Tom. Let's see if I can get all faces. I don't know if that's, you know, a month later and I can't remember anything about Zoom, which I <laughs> guess is a good thing. I'm looking for the grid view. Uh, I'm looking but not seeing. No. no. I don't know why I'm not getting grid view. Don't say it on. You don't want to be near me, and now you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, I, it feels like old times. There's your cat. Um, um, can anybody remind me where the Zoom um, view uh, toggle is? I don't, I'm using this top, on a tablet. Top right corner of your screen. Um, 
mine has a little box at the very top right that says view. And upon clicking that, you have standard gallery side by side. That's what I'm familiar with and I'm not seeing that. Are you currently in full screen? Uh, maybe that's not. not. I am and that's how it pops up for me. And I'm on a Mac, okay. I don't know where you are. I'm on a tablet, Mac tablet. Uh, well, that's certainly not the worst thing in the world. I'll work through it. Um, but I'm, I'm familiar with what you're saying, Steve, and I don't see it on this. Not to worry. Um, All right, FYI, not sure is, 7 o'clock. And yep, I was going to say, Daniel we do are have both a, with us. Okay, terrific. Um, we have a quorum. I, I saw Sue, I saw Steve, I saw Camilla, and I'm here. Chris will uh, be joining us, Pat will phone? not. Okay, terrific. Um, uh, and Chris is not yet on the call? No, he was coming from an appointment, so it may be a couple of minutes after seven before he's okay. able to get online with his, his laptop. Got it, thanks. Um, everyone, let's declare open this meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission of the Village of New Paltz. We're meeting June 21st slash 22nd uh, at 7 p.m. slash 1 a.m. Uh, via Zoom. Uh, it's nice to see everybody. And uh, I overheard, Sue, you were saying it's very hot there. It's warm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're having a lot of that too, uh, a real lot. But uh, we'll get through it as we always do. And uh, as, as it would happen, we have air conditioners to talk about tonight as we get to the first application. Um, shall we, um, everyone, defer the uh, approval of minutes since we have uh, Dina and Dan on the call? Is there any objection to that? No objection. No objection. Okay. okay, so Dina and Dan, welcome to the meeting. Um, Val is bringing up your application, which I think everybody has seen and understood. Uh, so we might start with any questions any of the HPC members had about just kind of the factual representations on the application. Dina and Daniel, is there a particular view you'd like me to put up? Well, we just are amused seeing Daniel stand by the size of the condensers. <laughs> <laughs> so is everybody getting a view of that? Um, just to point out that um, this one will be at the side of the house. The, the lower one is going to be on the north end of the house and it's going to be ground mounted. So there's only going to be a few inches between the bottom of the unit and the ground, it's gonna be lower by, I don't know, maybe six inches, eight inches. Um, the, but, than what's pictured. Yeah, than what's pictured here. But mm. by him standing next to it, you get the scale of what the size of the condenser is. Yeah, got it. Um, were there any uh, questions from the HPC? Is there anyone who feels like we need to review locations or placement. Okay. For me, I think the application was very clear about uh, everything, all the details of the project. And uh, I have no further questions nor objections. So. Maybe I'll just go around, Sue. Any questions or no. objections? Mm -mm. Okay. And Stephen, how about you? Um, no questions, good application. I agree, very, very helpful. Um, I think the one thing that came in after the application is that um, with respect to point four on page two, I think it would be, um, Dina and Daniel, you have since heard from Huguenot Street uh, in the person of Renzo stating that they have no objection either, is that correct? That's right. Yeah. I yeah, thought he was going to have somebody from HHS um, email to you, but I, I, I didn't what, hear from Renzo. And I will add a note to your application that's basically copying and pasting his email into your application. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I, I had remembered that he copied you, but I think maybe he didn't. Um, but there was no objection from HHS. And as Stephen said, this was a very clear application and we thank you for that clarity. Um, HPC members, is there any further discussion before I ask for a motion to um, uh, vote? Nope. Okay. Is there a motion to approve as submitted with the um, added detail that HHS as neighbor has no objection? I move to approve. Okay. Is there a sec seconded by Sue? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. That would be Tom. Aye. Stephen. Camilla, I saw your hand. And Sue. Yeah, aye. Okay, terrific. So Dean and Daniel, that, that passes as submitted. Good luck with the installation. Um, the, the, the photo that I have on my computer is, is one that will amuse you in a matter of weeks or days. And it's Daniel standing, he's, he's indicating the height of the unit and over his shoulder is an old style window air conditioner and you'll be done with those <laughs> noisy things <laughs> that, that operate at about 65 decibels. Um, <laughs> as opposed to, I think, about 20 on these units when they're on low. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. We, yeah. we didn't make so, the joke. It I took you, Tom. Yeah. I, I hope you'll put that in your scrapbook because <laughs> you'll know what I mean as soon as it's installed. They're oh, very yeah. economical as well. We, we put in a Mitsubishi um, about two years ago, and they're really, really good on energy, and they're so quiet. Um, yeah. So. Well, there's this balance of aesthetics and technical, you know, where to put things inside and how much noise. And we had someone right. from Reich come and they were very sensitive to all of that. That's great to hear. Yeah. I think more and more the HPC probably wants to move toward some instructions in advance about placement and, and height. You know, just as you've done, you've thought about the aesthetics of it. Not everybody does, of course. And then we, we have to talk about those things. Um, you know, while, while you're here, if, if my colleagues don't mind, um, I wanted just to report back that I did reach out to Tim and I think copied you on that email uh, concerning the lighting, um, uh, the, the parking lot lighting. And I just wanted to let you know and maybe make it a matter of record um, that he was very aware of um, that issue and sensitive to it. Doesn't mean that we don't wanna keep reminding him if, if things move forward, but uh, thank you for raising it. Mm -hmm. We did add this to the agenda, Tom, just in case Dina wanted to add some comments. Yep, and I'm just looking, I thought I saw it. Uh, it's under other business B. What would this must be? There we go. Um, yeah. So I just, if if it's not a problem with colleagues, let's just. Um, I think Dan had his hand. I just wanted to say we have been here for two weeks, and that's the first time we've been here in quite a while, and so we have been looking at the lot frequently in the evening when we thought maybe it was getting used, and even on Friday night or Saturday night there's really no one there. So okay. I, don't, I don't know um, whether there's any current need to have it lit. It's always good to look into the future so that if it is lit, that it's lit in a you know, sympathetic and responsible way. But right now it's really not getting nighttime use. And that's that's really useful to know, and maybe it's worth, you know, keeping a very informal, I don't know, survey or or just, you know, maybe on the back of an envelope, just writing down some dates and numbers of cars. Um, Dina has to take some photos of a Friday night, a Saturday night. Yeah. But I, in the long and kind of technical discussion about dark sky and light trespass and all of that. Um, I, that was my concern, having basically the backyard 
lit at night and now we have fireflies. But the point I actually wanted to make, because Tim had mentioned safety, and I said to somebody who I know, who knows this area, I said, oh, they're thinking of having more um, parking spaces there and lighting it at night. And I didn't say anything about my feelings. And he said, oh boy, if there's more light, people are really gonna go there and make a lot of noise. And right. So that's Congregate. just a casual observation that lighting it may create a problem, not solve a problem. I think that's, that's very wise. I mean, I don't think we really know unless there's been a study that I'm not aware of. Um, I think it's it's more into it's I, I suspect it's more either Tim's intuition or the village board's intuition that um, you know there's going to be overflow from restaurants and um, and the rail trail. Um, we we have been surprised generally with how bright the lighting is on Huguenot Street in general. Um, we organized our little town in Vermont to. Uh, have lights on the historic buildings that not only in form, um, but also in intensity uh, reflected, I don't know, kind of the spirit of the buildings. So, but here, for instance, the church is very brightly lit. The school behind the church. And, you know, maybe that's based on some experience that they felt they needed to do it because um, of something that had happened there, or maybe it just hasn't really been thought through what what appropriate lighting would be for some of those spaces. Or dark sky. Yeah, or, or just even yeah, for amateurs. And, and of course the, the stone houses, many of the stone houses have up lighting. Right. I, I mean, it's dramatic, but it is also problematic from um, a lighting perspective. No question, Daniel, no question. I think we're also probably in a historic moment where there's much more sophisticated, there are many more sophisticated options than there used to be. Lights that trigger, lights that are at half intensity and then go up to full when when they detect motion. I think we should just stay on the issue. I'm so grateful that you brought it up and, and the feeling. For me right. and two neighbors um, in the houses owned by historic Huguenots, there's the question of light trespass and light trespass is in the town lighting ordinances. So that's where I, I can use that word. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's there because it's a real thing. We have some issues where we live too. Um, issue, yeah. um, well, thank you. I just I wanted to acknowledge that you know we we heard you and I did um, take the action that we discussed and uh, we'll continue to watch it. I think it would be great if you could develop a summer's worth of data, you know, that probably is more than anybody knows about its current usage. Um, yeah. The other fact um, is that the rail trail is is supposed to be closed, you know, once it's dark. So there is no need for parking for the rail trail at that point. That's a very good point, Sue. So. And yeah. the gardens for nutrition are only open from dawn to dusk. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're not going to go out and pick vegetables or weed in the garden at midnight. Okay. <laughs> maybe pick vegetables, but not weed. <laughs> right. Um, no, well, let's let's certainly keep keep our eye on this issue. Um, uh, Dean and Daniel, since we have you here, also just we wanted to confirm that the application for the accessory building was just formally withdrawn. Is that that's correct? Right. We got here and realized. We don't really need that little shed there. Even though we went to all the trouble to get it approved every which way. So, and um, Lisa Al said, well, is it going to be somewhere else on the property? And the answer is no. Okay. Well, that's 
that's fine too. You'll have more, more green space. Keep your eyes on it though. If Dina gets a chance, she's going to build the barn there that her father had torn down 65 or 70 years yeah. ago. The really big barn. <laughs> if I get that lottery ticket. The, the big, big barn. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll talk then. <laughs> well, this sounds great. Uh, thank you both for, for a really clear application. Good luck with the air conditioning. Um, and, uh, and thank you for coming to us from Italy in the middle of the night. Well, it's fine. I'm happy to do it, I guess. I'm, I'm able to do it. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, thanks. Good. Okay. All right. Well, Dina, we'll, I'll we'll... copy you on my message to the building department later tonight. Okay. And we're just going to hang in and listen to some of the other uh, things on the agenda. Sure. Great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, let's make the next thing the um, discussion of the minutes. Um, I looked them over uh, prior to your seeing them and didn't see anything wrong. Uh, did anybody see anything that needs amendment? No. No from Sue. They look good. I move the minutes be accepted as presented. I second. Is there a second? Oh. Seconded. I think I heard Sue first, so doesn't matter. Um, it really doesn't. But um, I'm in favor, and uh, I, I guess we should just tally the vote. Camilla, how do you vote? Aye. Okay. Stephen, you're in favor. Yep. Aye. As, as he who moved. <laughs> um, and Sue. As yes. Well. In favor. Aye. Okay. Great. Valerie, thanks again for um, great minutes. Very clear. Thank you. Um, Valerie, I had understood that Raz and David were planning to join us. Is that At about 7.30. So we've okay. got a few minutes. Bill is here and uh, Misha Harnick has joined us as well. Perfect. Why don't we go to Bill's report and then when uh, Raz and David arrive, we can go to theirs. Okay. Bill, welcome. Well, welcome, everyone. Good evening. This, Good evening. this, this sweaty day. <laughs> um, uh, not too much report, other than I want to thank everybody for replying in haste to my request for support of naming the playground after Julia Jackson. Um, we got several letters from people in the community, including your own, and we've decided that we will, in fact, name the playground in her honor. And we made that announcement on Saturday morning at about 1130 during a uh, ceremony that uh, kicked off the village's Juneteenth celebrations, which were uh, held at the library at Historic Huguenot Street and at Unison. So thank, thanks very much for doing that. I appreciate that a great deal. Uh, the other news is I've been appointed, if you will, to uh, be your liaison for at least another year. So oh, good. So you've got me. I'm sorry. Um, no, we're not, Bill. <laughs> and the other thing I not so much report but uh, something to consider and certainly not solved in a single meeting is with these um, mini splits being put on exteriors to homes that uh, face street side, the street view of. Um, wondering if it's possible to color match those units to the house's color itself. Um, I'm sure that could be done and may, that might be an extra thing that an installer could do or a homeowner could do so that it blends in more, uh, blends in more with the structure of the house rather than sticking out like a, a sore thumb as some of them do. I think that's, that's quite wise, Bill, if you don't mind my commenting. Um, later this evening, we're gonna have to talk about a, a case that um, might, might be a little tricky. And I think that we could probably be more proactive as these become more and more popular 
um, I think it would make sense for the HPC to have, I can envision a one page or two page handout available on the web, giving people that kind of guidance. Um, I know that the uh, channels, the plastic channels that hide the um, tubing and the wiring can be painted. I don't know about the units themselves, but it's certainly worth asking. Um, yeah, the the channels are are vinyl and vinyl can be painted and uh, the the units themselves are metal so they can be painted but and that's that could just be a recommendation um, uh, and maybe you know some of the bigger companies working in our community could look into it um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm speaking uh, perhaps Rycor could look into it since they've been doing plenty of installations in, in new pulse and see if it's possible to, you know, color match when you can't really disguise or hide behind uh, shrubbery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So just, just a suggestion, you know, something to look into to discuss it. That's, that's all I've got. That sounds great. Bill, is there any further development on the Ann Oliver house? Ah, the Ann Oliver house, yes. <laughs> Uh, delayed again, um, but uh, mostly tied to the delay in the uh, Stewart's approval from the state uh, to operate. Uh, the, okay. light, the light is up. It's operational. Uh, the last email I got, it looks like this week there's going to be uh, an opening. I think it's the twenty. Fifth, I think, is the date. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. But uh, this week they're to open and they would like to make an announcement about the gifting of the house to the village. So it looks like all the legality has been met um, at last checks, but it's just a matter of them wanting to be lead on the announcement. Great, great. Um, Stephen, would you mind keeping a special eye out in the paper or watching at Stewart's to <clears throat> maybe just follow that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I had heard they were opening this Wednesday, but that of course is subject to change um, and I can't confirm it, but I will gladly keep my eyes and ears open. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it is definitely this week. I, I'm sorry if I don't know if it's Wednesday or Friday. I don't have the, the email in front of me. Mm -hmm. That's great. But that's the other thing news. I want, the other thing I wanted to mention is there was discussion about renaming this commission. Still under discussion. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's actually kind of the next item. Uh, okay. Yeah. And well, why don't we? Is there anything else you wanted to mention? No, nope. that's good. Okay. I'm good. Thank. Thanks very much. Yeah. No. Thank you. And and congratulations on your re-election and your reappointment. We're glad to have you stay Great. on. Likewise, Thank, thanks very much. Um, let's go to item C1, everyone. Uh, this ends up being a bundle of different things, but um, just following Bill's question. So um, Bill, we have had you know quite a serious talk about renaming ourselves as the, um, DRB or design review board slash or, you know, and historic preservation commission and maybe somewhat subordinating the historic preservation to the design review. Um, although that obviously is still up for discussion. Um, but we're very much thinking about that. Camilla had some good ideas for revising the mission statement to reflect that. Um, and then I wanted just to lay in one other thing, which I'm tardy on, um, but Corey uh, asked if the Historic Preservation Commission would consider like a one or two page handout that he could hand over to uh, prospective applicants so that they know in advance roughly what our categories and expectations are. Uh, and I think that's an excellent idea. I don't think we really have power to do it as anything more than recommendations until we have power to enforce um, some of our design requirements. So there's a bit of a chicken and egg um, situation at the moment, but I thought, Camilla, would you like to just 
summarize maybe more than go into detail, but summarize some of the ideas you had for revising our current mission statement? Uh, I just thought that since uh, preser the preservation movement uh, across the United States is moving into a different direction, not necessarily uh, thinking only about individual buildings, but whole neighborhoods and, and um, a more holistic approach that considers uh, the whole um, community where historic buildings or historic districts are, uh, maybe our mission statement should reflect that as well and maybe include that uh, we are aiming to uh, act as a design review board for the whole village. In that way, uh, perhaps community members would uh, find out more about what we are trying to achieve and why. Uh, and um, maybe yeah. that our role would be a bit more expanded. And also that we are um, a historic architectural preservation board, not necessarily um, um, a board that would want to preserve certain aspects of history other than architecture. Mm -hmm. yeah. More of a lived history than a purely architectural one. Um, I, I just wanted to comment on, Camille and I had an email exchange about this maybe a month ago, and I think it's a great idea. Probably something that we should bundle into the name change and a change in the legal status or the legal procedures. Um, I'm happy to say that we've seen a really positive drift from the planning board and the building department toward um, you know, seeking our recommendations, even if they're not, you know, even if they don't have the force of law in many cases. So um, I, I would say, Camilla, you know, yes, absolutely, that we should be looking at the mission statement and with some of those ideas in mind. Um, Sue and Stephen, are, anything you wanted to contribute or ask or object to about that line of thinking? I think it sounds like a great, great idea. I think it would be wonderful if we could do that. I agree. Yeah. I, okay. So that you know, that's really a project, and I think a project for later this summer. You know, as soon as we can. Um, and I think that the the document for Corey probably can be written. I think it really was just my busyness and and travel that didn't make it happen. But I think that the brochure is a pretty good starting place for what that short document would look like, just a digest of that and maybe some pointers to it. Um, but why don't we put that on the July agenda as a very specific thing, Val, to talk about the mission statement, um, to talk about this document for Corey, and to talk about the broader uh, creation of a design review board. That's good. Okay. Just one more no. thing. Um, I forgot oh, sure. to mention that uh, uh, regarding the mission statement that um, I thought we should also mention that uh, the downtown business district is not yet locally designated and therefore we don't have uh, much of a say in what's happening in there, but we would like to change that and, uh, and have the downtown business district uh, locally landmarked. And we, um, I spoke with John Arfitelli just a few days ago and um, he, uh, you know, we're gonna get complete support from the town on that. He just said, why isn't that happening? And I explained, well, it's complicated and we're trying for something more ambitious, but I think as a minimum, you're right, yeah. So Valerie, let's make that all a July agenda item. Okay. Please. Camilla, how about art show? Uh, we had 24 submissions for the art show and uh, I, everything has been uh, ready to view. 
for a few days now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really nice selection of artworks again. That's great. I'm applauding. You can't hear me, but I'm applauding. Once again, you've pulled off a wonderful thing. Were there any particular comments or questions from the artists? Uh, I think everyone is eager to come back to an in-person show. Uh, so hopefully yeah. next year. What a surprise. Do that. Yeah. And how long can, can it stay up or it's really not limited, right? It's not limited really because uh, I just created some albums on the HPC's uh, Facebook page. So they can be accessed anytime really. Great. This year's and last year's show as well. So it's, been, it's going to be there. Camilla, do you want to do another press release? Uh, what do you think? Well, that it's available. Um, Perhaps for the public, because I know I, I notified everyone uh, on our mailing list, all our artists, but uh, maybe the general public might not know. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, you know, just sort of keeps it in the public eye and um, honors the artists who contribute. Um, Camille, am I right that item three, um, the archives, nothing new? There is nothing new about that. Um, okay. I will send uh, the latest batch of uh, pictures to uh, Zach and then see what he will be able okay. to do with the archives. Should, should we strike that um, item? There hasn't really been much of a report for a while for July. Can we? strike that and just you'll let us know when. Yes. Okay. Um, and how about, um, Camille, you're really on a roll. Um, report on 144 Main Street, if you would, please. Yes, I think they almost completed uh, the painting project and uh, they chose Turtle Green for the shingles and Dijon for uh, the vertical boards, they are both Benjamin Moore colors. And um, I, I, I'm partial, of course, to these colors, but I think, I think the buildings look really nice. And um, the brick has come to life. They, it uh, completely changed. Did you hear anything yeah. beyond? Um, What's that? Did you hear anything from the owners beyond, beyond the initial happiness with the colors. Did you hear anything after more? Of it I haven't up? heard anything new, but uh, uh, Peter said that once uh, everything is completed, then they will let us know and then we can meet at the site. Wonderful. This I think is an excellent example of how we can be helpful without putting any kind of pressure on uh, you know, property owners. They came to us. Camilla was very generous with her time and ideas and they seem very happy. Um, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dave has joined us for 2104. Okay. Great. Um, David, hello. You're muted. Mm. Hi. Hey. And Roz. Well, <laughs> and Roz, welcome to you both. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for a very clear application. Um, welcome, first of all, welcome to New Paltz and to Huguenot Street. Thank you so Thanks. much. Happy to be here. It's been great. Yeah. Good, good. Hope you're settling in well. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, it's just, it's just if uh, if everything wasn't backed up like furniture and everything, it's half empty in here. <laughs> but you know, problems for a different day. <laughs> Problems for a different day. Maybe enjoy the open space for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our dogs are enjoying it. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, you could have mini bowling or something in the intro. <laughs> That's uh, an idea. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome. So, um, you uh, almost immediately figured out uh, how certificates of appropriateness work, and we hope it wasn't too onerous. But um, because you're on Huguenot Street. Um, maybe just give you the little preamble. You know, you have bought a house on a, a really important historic street, and it's our duty and pleasure to uh, 
protect it as best we can. And sometimes that means doing applications. Um, but it certainly won't mean that you can't have your fence. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me ask my, my colleagues, were, were there any questions about the fence? Um, probably the most useful thing, Val, would be the first and the second page of the application, just to refresh everybody's memory. I'm sorry, Tom, do you mean the photos or the plan? Um, I, yeah. Well, I was thinking both, actually. Okay. The, well, I think the plan might be more useful, but okay. it's really up to my colleagues. Okay. Um, is there anyone who um, has any questions? I just have one question. Will there um, any vegetation be removed uh, for putting up the fence any of the trees or? Yeah, we removed, uh, oh, you're asking us, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, we removed, um, I think, five trees that were like weed trees. I think most of them were weed trees. Or, yeah, so there's uh, a chain link fence on the back of the property between us and the church. And some of them were like growing through the fence. So those we removed. Our plan is once the fence is put in that we'll put some trees back in the, the place, like maybe a willow, because there's an area that's a bit wet, things like that. Mm -hmm. Camilla, did that answer? Uh, yes, and uh, I just have one more question. Uh, the longest uh, um, section of fence between your property and uh, uh, I don't know who lives there right now, I'm sorry. Um, it's Craig Shankles is on his next door. I think the longest oh. one is actually the other side. Oh, right. you're right. Yeah. You're right. That's a rental property, I believe. Yes, it's a rental property. Because that's uh, really wooded and, and you have a lot of uh, growth there. Will you have to do anything there? It's just, I'm just not sure you have enough space. Yeah, they said, the fence people said it should be fine. Um, yeah. yeah, when they came and inspected it, they were like, yeah, no, no need for tree removal in there. We're just going to put it in between the trees once we figure out like the exact, like, you know, like the line from the two iron rods. Then yeah. they were like, you know, we'll come like a few feet off of that and build the fence there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Just because it's such a nice, uh, you know, it's a nice screen for you to, to have all those. Yeah. Trees yeah, we love them. We hope yeah. not to remove any of these because they also kind of, you know, provide um, um, like sort of a hiding of the fence. <laughs> like, you know, we, we don't want to see the fence. Our goal is to see greenery and not to feel like the, there's a fence. So we're hoping to put it in between the trees. Yes. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, Sue, any questions or comments? No, I got to visit the property um, and it, it looks wonderful. It, it looks fun. Val and I were there together. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. Um, Stephen, how about you? Any questions or comments? Um, no, it seems fine. I mean, this year you do back up on the little league field, which is, <laughs> I'm not sure if a six foot high fence is going to keep you from a foul ball, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a famous fence called the green monster, but I don't think we can prove that. <laughs> That's it's about, right. I don't know, 30 feet high or something, maybe higher. Uh, It'll be very expensive with the price of wood these days. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it would. As you've discovered, uh, it's insane. Um, no, that's very good. Um, David and Roz, I think that you saw Val's email um, cautioning you about fence height, which is really not our purview, but something that you'll definitely want to check um, before proceeding. My recollection is, I think what Val is thinking of is that um, you cannot have a six foot fence that um, goes beyond the front uh, actually, it might even be the rear edge of the house. Here, um, I shared this with Dave and Roz earlier. Um, here's the code that I yeah. think is the one most applicable. Yeah, I couldn't, for whatever reason, I couldn't open it. And it's, it's associated with the front line of the structure, the main structure. Front line, yeah. 
Yeah, we'll then we'll just double check that with Corey. But we, in in one of our previous conversations with the fence people, um, you know, for this section on the back corner where it's going to be four feet, they said that that's originally they were planning on six feet, and when we made that adjustment, they were like, "It's not a problem. We'll just buy the wood at six and trim it down." I think they'll say the same thing wherever we have to do that. So it's, yeah. it's probably just a question of what at what point it starts, if it's the porch or the front of the house. Right. I, I think Corey would be your uh, answer. I wanted to let you know there, there is a way you can appeal that. It's kind of a long process, as you can imagine, but mm -hmm. you, can, you can appeal to um, have the fence extend, or you know, a six foot fence extend to that um, corner. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's it's beyond building department. I think it has to go to the planning board. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not a picnic necessarily, <laughs> um, but it's it's an option that you can certainly discuss with Corey. Thank and you. otherwise just content yourself with a, a four foot fence and maybe vegetation that's taller. Yeah. And eventually you can achieve the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, As far as the front goes, like aesthetically, I think four foot would be totally fine. Um, because then it can like, you know, kind of start lowering down and meet the front fence, which is lower. So I think aesthetically it would be nicer than a whole like jump, you know? Yeah. Yep. And yeah. the fence people can certainly do that. Yeah. That's great. Um, colleagues, is there any question and anything we should discuss before um, putting this to a vote? One of the things I alerted Dave and Roz to um, was whether or not we would need a public hearing in, in terms of the um, visual implications. I, uh, I certainly don't see that. I, did we have a public hearing for the original section of the fence? Do you remember that? I think we did. I'd have to go back and look it up because that was quite a while ago, but I, I do believe we did. We may, it may have also predated our code changes that leaves a little more yeah. discussion. Yeah. Um, that's a discussion, everybody, for the HPC. I um, I don't see a reason, particularly if, if the um, section extending from the um, side is four feet, I cannot see no, especially since out. they've talked with um, Craig and his wife and uh, the church um, and everybody seems to be in agreement that it's not a problem. Um, and I know you were saying that um, that you wanted that the fencing guys that they wanted to come sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. I don't have a problem with it, Tom. I would also argue that having the um, the wooden fence in the back is a an improvement over the chain link fence. Yeah, it's a, ma it's a massive <laughs> <Yes>. improvement. <laughs> it's a massive improvement. I take it the chain link belongs to the ball field or the church. Yeah, the church. Yeah, yeah. So that's for the church to deal with. Stephen, do you see a need for public hearing? I do not. I would be ready to move for acceptance. I I would. Uh, okay, so Stephen moved, Camilla seconded. All those in favor? Definitely aye. Uh, I. Um, and um, let's just Val, make it part of our um, recommendation that we are noting that height stipulation and it's, it's for the applicants to appeal that if they wish. Okay, okay. That's great. Thank you, uh, Dave and Roz. I, I'll copy you on my email to the building department later tonight. Okay. So it, and that goes to Corey and to Holly, um, copy to you, copy to Tom. So you know, that should, I hope, start a conversation and you will need to be in touch with them about getting the building permit. All right. Okay. Thank you good. so much. Thank okay. you. All. Absolutely. Nice and, and Roz and David, once again, welcome to the community. Please reach out uh, at any point as you can see, our services are free and the form is pretty simple. And um, anything that's exterior needs to come to us. Um, there is a, um, 
a category of like for like replacement. If, if a board rots on your front porch and you replace it with the same kind of board, it's nice if you tell us you're doing that, but you don't have to do the full application. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, shoot, shoot Val an email uh, and just, just let us know. And um, as you can see also, the, the scale of the project determines whether there's a public hearing or not. So if you decided to do an addition or a major, then you could certainly expect that there would be. But for something this innocuous and making the kind of improvement, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to say yes without one. Great. Yeah, we'll definitely be coming to you with a very exciting project very soon we're just uh, <laughs> one thing at a time um yeah, yeah but uh probably you'll see us in your next meeting talking about the uh, the other project <laughs> yeah. very good yeah let yeah. us know just a teaser yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, okay. gonna, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be the shed uh, it's gonna be replacing the shed um so we we want to be we want to co-create this with you and we need a lot of advice on what this sure. what feels right so yeah yeah We'll put something sure. together and one thing i might say um that you might want to consider is um modern sheds uh, are limited to i think 144 square feet before you need a different kind of application and I, i'm guessing that your current shed has more than that so mm -hmm. do your calculation um accordingly but sure we look forward to that great amazing okay all righty, thank you so much All for right. having us. Yeah, nice thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Welcome bye -bye. again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, everybody. Sue, how are things on Huguenot Street? Any reports on item uh, five? No, I haven't heard any updates on the um, on the on the church elevators. Uh, you know, last I reported was uh, they were still waiting. The um, only other thing that I uh, just wanted to mention, and it's really not Huguenot Street, but it's people on Huguenot Street that have at, talked to me about stewards and said that talking about how surprised they were of how much um, black top asphalt area um, that, that there is. And I have to say that I was somewhat surprised. I just don't remember when we looked at the plans that it was going to be such a big area that was all going to be, um, you know, black topped and and laid out. But I've had people mention that to me that that they were not necessarily happy about that. But that again is <laughs> it's a kind of a done deal. Kind of a done deal. Um, yeah, I um, I think I saw just, you know, the day it was blacktopped and I haven't really seen it since and I wasn't aware that they're about to open. Um, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's an anomalous project for that section and that, that zone anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, accommodations had to be made because it's a gas station and, yeah. and you know, it's judged to be a pretty good use apart from that but that's noted i mean i think those are legitimate concerns but nothing much we can do now um, uh, do we want to talk about 130 huguenot street now do we want to do that later you want to mention 168 real quick i probably should have included this last month because we heard from um from the or the uh, resident, the property owner last month. It was about replacing the two tall shrubs right next to the front entrance stairs at Dana Rodikoff's place. Yes. Do I remember anything at all? <laughs> I think we, I think we said um, that they're not significant. Exactly. Enough. Yeah, yes. that's that really was a blip in my month. Um, yeah, we got a request or, or a question from, from Dana at 168 Huguenot Street, whether uh, removing shrubs that had grown too close to the house, I believe, Val, or just kind of I think that's, that's correct, yeah. They're too big um, and she wants to replace them. 
Yeah, and so the question was, does it rise to the level of significant landscaping? I just said, no, it doesn't. Um, and I hope nobody objects to that decision, <laughs> but I try to move things along when they don't seem like they could ever be problems. Um, uh, well, let's, in, if nobody objects, I think we should open this question of what's going on at 130 Huguenot Street. It's not necessarily um, a, a fun topic, but I got a call last week from Corey, quite an emergency call, uh, because the owners at 130 Huguenot Street had made, the call came on Wednesday, uh, I believe. No, I'm, I'm sorry, it was Tuesday. Uh, they had made an arrangement for a Friday installation of a split unit, uh, which is on the north side. I think everybody's seen it at this point. And that was, um, you know, and the, the record should show this well, that was over the objection of Corey, um, who said, no, you have to go to the HPC. And I gather from Corey that they said, well, we're not. Um, so we're in a situation where um, our requirement has been flouted. Uh, what I told Corey is, you know, there's really nothing much we can do except communicate that that has to happen. And um, at very least, uh, it, the unit should be installed so that it's not visible from the street. Um, and Corey was going to call RICOR and make that clear. It looks to me like from the photos that I saw that that partially happened, but it's still visible from the north side, which Val is showing us now. Um, I'll, I'll scroll down to the front view. And Stephen can speak to this as well. I, yeah, right. I can look so out, the, I'm looking out, out my window and I can see it. Yeah, so Stephen, you have a slightly oblique angle on the front of the house, is that correct? That's true, I'm actually a little bit south and I'm looking up at the, um, at the southern and uh, western view, not this view. Um, and from what, from our perspective, one can see the, um, what was the phrase Bill used? The channels, uh, the channels are what yeah. are, are obvious against that uh, stone and dark wood uh, building. Is this a time where we could use Bill's suggestion and, and um, ask them or require them to to paint those channels um, to match the house? Um, we can, I mean, that's the discussion that we have to have, Sue. And I, I feel like we want to measure it against, you know, you are that you and Stephen in particular are the neighbors of the people who own the house. Um, but Corey was was not happy with their answer and they simply accepted the fine. It's a few hundred dollar fine for doing this. Um, oh, so they were know. fined. I believe so, or Corey was indicating that he probably would be fining them for, I, I think really what it amounted to is a permit after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, really, all we can do given this situation, and, and there was a sort of humane element to it. I think that the person who owns the house has a pregnant wife or a newborn and really right. wanted air conditioning in a hurry. So I, one understands that, but you know, by the same token, we, we move very quickly when there's an emergency. Um, and I think we I think would have looked for an alternative to what, what ended up being installed. Um, I'm sorry, Stephen, I accidentally cut. Off. No, I've just, I've, they were gone for quite a while, a number of months. So I, you know, they've just moved back at the beginning of June. Okay. I may say something. Uh, one thing I learned at the camp training is that if a project uh, in a sensitive area is done without permission or varies from what was permitted, then the HPCs can just say, well, you have to remove it and do it over. Uh, yeah. So far we have been very lenient with everyone, I think. 
I'm not saying we should do this, but we have the right to do it. And, and uh, that's part of the... I agree, Camille, that's, that's absolutely true. Right and certainly it's in the back of my mind that you know we can make a recommendation that it be removed. I don't really wanna be that kind of HPC, but I also, we've never faced something quite like this. There, there's another case on Huguenot Street where a split unit was installed. We found out about it later, um, but you know, efforts were made to remediate the problem by through landscaping and some fencing. Not completely successfully in my opinion, but um, I, um, go ahead, Stephen, sorry. Um, no, no. It's Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Hi. Um, so is it's installed already? Yes. Yeah. It's there. Oh, okay. Well, and it's right on this, it's like, if I'm looking at it right from the street, it's right on that side, like from the... Uh, it is on the north um, side. It's not. So is it, so is it on the side of the house? Like if you're looking straight at it from the street or is it no. on no, the front be, of the house? On your left. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, the, the front of the house wasn't affected Thankfully. Okay. Well, um, no, actually the front of the house has a channel. The front of the house has a channel running across it now. Oh, I'm sorry, that I don't That's see. That's right, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Very yeah, cool. I'm, um, I'm the only one who hasn't seen this in person. I'm just going on photos that, oh, I see it now, I really do. Um, here's what I think we might wanna do, given that Camilla's right that the, you know, the strictest thing would be remove it or redo it. Um, I think that we could invite the owners to the July meeting um, with you know, that and other options in mind and explore something that really does two things. One is remediates the problem and two makes it clear that this can't happen again. Um, uh, because as I said, I, I can't think of a time when uh, somebody who knows in advance that they can't do this has done it. And that, that's what Corey reported to me on Tuesday last week. Um, so, I mean, the COA is not optional. It's, it's, re it's a requirement. They... Right. And it's not granted at the moment because it hasn't been submitted or considered. Um, could we just go around? I'm sorry, I don't have grid view, so I can't read any reactions. At the moment, I have Camilla up. Camilla, what, what, what do you think of the idea of um, a pretty direct letter uh, to the owners inviting them uh, to the July meeting with an idea of remediation of an unapproved project? What words to that effect? Oh, yes, I, I agree. But I think we also have to make it clear in no uncertain terms that this is not how <laughs> you cannot really conduct business like this. This will serve as an example for other people who, who will say, well, That's what I worry about. Yeah. They did it, they didn't have an application and then once they did it, we approved it because there was nothing else to be done. And I, I just don't think it's right. And it's not fair for everyone else who is, uh, you know, doing the right thing and doing what's, what's required by code. And right. And, you know, if I may just add a footnote, um, initially Dana and Daniel, you know, wrote and said, we hope that we don't have to do this. And I said, well, actually you do. Um, and as we can see, they, they submitted a very good application that made things very clear and we were able to approve it in a single meeting. Um, because, you know, if they had come to us, we may have come up with a better placement, a different solution, how to, um, 
of the pipes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who installed it. Was it? Rikor is what Corey told me. Because mm, usually they are very sensitive about it. Yeah, Rikor is pretty good, like, usually. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, we don't know what technical right. obstacles they faced, but um, that's what, no, that's what meetings are for. It, and that's, that's, that's a discussion that we can have and then come up with a solution or, or remediation if that's the only place where the units can be placed. Obviously, we are not against people uh, installing these units at all. No. Which, I, again, if I can add a second footnote, I really feel like we need to be proactive on this issue and develop a, a short handout that just tells people what our expectations are and you know the fact that they are uh, subject to COA, et cetera. Um, I remember having this discussion when we were talking about code revisions and I kept hammering away at this, that this, this is something that has to be either put in code or made, made clear. So what are your thoughts on, on the issue? You, I think you and Stephen probably have the most. Yeah, I would, I would agree invested. that I think we should, you know, invite them to the meeting or, and maybe, maybe not even phrase it as an invite. Yeah. You know, it's a, sort of like you will be at this meeting. Um, I, I think that it, the simplest remediation really could be some paint and you know that i mean it won't completely solve the problem obviously but it certainly would help um, mm -hmm. but yeah they they can't I, I i agree that we really don't need to be letting them you know, basically get away with this. We already have that reputation of, you know, what is the point of HPC? Because we can do what we want, which is, I hear frequently um, from neighbors. Um, I think we need to turn that around. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, how do you feel? Well, I think we should request their appearance. Um, I think it's illustrative that they're willing to just write Corey a check and right. close close it. I mean, for them, um, you know, it's it's unfortunate because it's just so obvious, and it's so obvious right now. I was it was about ten days ago that they had the service come and they they cut down or they mowed the whole lawn and the whole bank and they cut down all the lilies, and yeah. it's somewhat denuded now, and it's painfully obvious. Um, perhaps a coat of paint, perhaps some landscaping in front of the split unit. And, you know, perhaps if things grew in a little bit, it wouldn't be as obvious, but that doesn't fix the point that they just decided to go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, Chris, I, how do you feel? I, I agree with Sue. It's kind of like, I, I don't know if it needs to be an invitation. I think it's kind of like, you know, you, you yeah. can't just have all these people, like, we just, everyone else that had something done, just, we did the meeting within, you know, it's not like we're asking them to do anything that's not expected of every single other person on the street. So it's just like, you know, what's the point of preserving it? You know, you can just, they find skirt, any sort of whatever, and you just don't say anything to them, so. I do I agree. I, I, I pretty much just echo everyone else's uh, comments. Thank you, Chris. I, I agree with everybody. Um, I think that to, to Sue's point and, and the point you were reiterating, Chris, um, maybe the phrasing can be you are invited and strongly encouraged to attend the July 19th meeting at which we will be discussing implication with you or without you. Uh, remediation uh, or removal measures. You know, just, I don't know, Sue, does that hit the tone that you were Yeah, for? I mean, you know, I, I really would like to make it even stronger, but I understand what you're saying. You know. 
Um, well, I, I'm just sort of wordsmithing in my head here at <laughs> two in the morning. Um, let me do this. Uh, I can circulate a draft. I don't think it has to be a terribly long letter, um, but no. it would be, you know, in, in light of uh, an installation that was not approved, we invite you to attend the July meeting and strongly encourage you to do that. At that meeting, we will be discussing a, a range of remediation and or removal um, requirements, something like that. Um, and we will do so whether you're in attendance or not. Yeah, that's right. Um, does that, Camilla, uh, Steve and Chris, does something of that tone sound right? Yeah, I think it's definitely important to kind of have the rem removal and remediation requirements just so that it has actual, you know, it's like it's, it's with, it's your best interest to me. Yeah, right. You know, Coming <laughs> I, uh, I, I heard something very uh, charming. I read something in the last week, and the phrase was, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu, um, which I thought was pretty clever. So something that expresses that sentiment. St Stephen, does that um, echo well for you? Agreed. Does that sound like Yes, that? agreed. OK. So Valerie, I will. Um, draft that letter i hope to do it tomorrow get it out to the hpc for comments and let's try to get it to the applicant uh with definitely copy to corey in the building department this week okay yep okay good um happier news everyone uh item number six i had an inquiry from the owner of uh, eight north front street which is the former Scarborough Fair, now the candle shop. Um, she was asking about a couple of things having to do with the roof, the gutters. There's a, a former probably television or ham radio uh, mast. Um, and uh, most of the things that she wants to do um, are straightforward. But to Camilla's point and the point we've been talking about, you know, in the, in the end, I had to say, everything I'm telling you is a recommendation. It's not a requirement because although you're in the downtown district, you're not bound by HPC, um, DRB um, requirements. Um, she's a very cooperative owner. And I actually kind of took the initiative to suggest some future things that she could do, which she said she would like to as, as her budget permits. So that feels like a success story. Um, does anybody have a question or want to know more about that, that issue? <coughs> That's who we gave the partners and preservation, uh, or no, sorry. It is, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. That's right. Um, I think, you know, you could probably say that the the award really went to what Ingrid did with the little house that's the later addition to the older house. Um, and I guess our document really reflected that. It went to Ingrid and her business rather than to the property owner. But um, the property owner is very proud of what Ingrid's done. I mean, I think we have a very cooperative um, owner there. So was it the... Um... Was it Ingrid or was it the owner of the property? Uh, the, the owner's name is Eileen. Um, it's N-G-A-I. Nagai. Eileen Nagai. And I invited her to a future meeting, stressing that we don't charge for anything and that Camilla is very helpful on colors. Um, I recommended for one thing that, you know, maybe the, the house could be painted the same color as the business or at least a complementary color rather than, um, it's kind of a, I don't know, creamy pumpkin against the blue. It doesn't look too intentional, but anyway, I didn't want to push too hard on that. Yeah. When, uh, when Ingrid came to us, maybe there was a plan to paint the, the rest of the building as well. 
wasn't there? there? There might have been. I don't honestly remember that, but I don't remember a lot of things. Because we brought that up that uh, the, you know, the new paint colors will be very uh, jarring next to the, the blue house. And then I think they said that they will paint the rest of the building too, but I'm not, I, I can't, I'm not a hundred percent positive that there was any uh, uh, specific date or, or any commitment that it will actually happen. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, sadly, we're not in a position to make any demands or ask for any commitments, but um, you know, it looks like it'll be a good relationship going forward. Um, uh, Chris, do you have any updates on item seven or eight? Um, um, burial? Well, so I wanted to just first start off by saying um, thank you to everyone. I, I, I mentioned at the time about it, but um, I've been going through some health issues recently um, that have taken a toll on me a little bit. So, just wanted to say thank you to everyone for your understanding and um, patience with all this, um, especially because I wasn't in class to read me. So I just want to address that a lot. Um, just back and back <laughs> out of nowhere, you know. You are very um, welcome back, Chris. No, Maybe. yeah. I, I, well, I just wanted to acknowledge that you know, everyone is very understanding of it. And so I appreciate it. But that being said, with, with both of the projects, um, I think it's a different time now because the site landscaping, well, the, where I left off with that was with Historic Huguenot Street. I think it was kind of around winter of, or the beginning of winter um, last year. And then um, also COVID, you know, now, now we're in a uh, world seemingly um, for the moment, you know. So, um, at least with the site landscaping, I hope to kind of pick that up. I, I don't know if it, um, I think where we also left off on that was it kind of becomes a maintenance issue. Mm -hmm. um, so, it would take a little bit more to uh, kind of set up a plan for the long term um, without it falling on you know, the property owner. Um, but I will say, I walk past it all the time and people really do stop and all the time. Read it. Yeah, it's, I think it's become. Um, I was walking past and I saw a bunch of people sitting and reading it while they were on the bench. And, I was like, you know what, that these things do really make a difference. So, um, Camilla, I want to just say thank you again for getting it done. Everybody, really. Um, and then, uh, and then for the historic marker, refresh and Riften, Again, I, I kind of got to pick up where I left off before I had to take a break. So. Um, I'll definitely try and get more information on that. I think where I'm at on that would be to, I just don't know, I'll have to look it up. I think I did look it up a couple of months ago. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if Rifton has, like I'm just not sure who I would reach out to exactly. Um, because I don't know that there's a historical preservation commission there, or you know, I don't, I don't know how that sign got there. You know, when we started doing the African American burial ground sign, um, there was a lot of documentation that, and then it kind of, I mean, it obviously led me to everyone here, um, and Susan Stetson Cohen, and Andy Williams Myers, and so. You know, I, I think I just got to figure out maybe like even contacting Town Hall and Rifting or something, and just saying, "Hey, but, uh, I, I have drove, I have gone past the site a couple of times. Um, it's not quite as in 
I mean, I, I think it can it can't hurt to obviously give it a fresh a coat because it, it clearly is worn. It's not quite in the same condition as the aftermarket railroad sign was, um, and there's not as much um, growth around it. Um, it's and it's much taller. It, it, it's uh, it's way higher. Um, like the pole that it sits on is, I want to say, a few feet higher than the one that the African American song um, sits on. So just different things like that that I've kept in mind. So, um, but yeah, I, I just have to figure out who to reach out to to coordinate. Um, so that's that's... That's really the updates on both of those. But I, again, I just want to thank everybody for being awesome and giving me a, a little bit of space to take care of myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, that it's turbulent that time is, is, pro is primary. And I feel yeah. like um, particularly number eight, I mean, if we punted this down the road for two years, it would still be okay. So don't feel any pressure to move yeah. quickly on number eight i think number seven you know it's we're getting into not a good time to do a lot of planting so maybe kick that down to an autumn project if if ever um because yeah. you're right there's a maintenance element and we have to kind of have a plan or a group of volunteers or you know some some system in place um that we're not just foisting that on the property owner yeah it, it's and that was kind of when i because we I did speak to i think it was bloom um was the company that said that they would do pretty much like the, donate the labor um they, they that was like one of their main concerns it's just that you know we, basically we can plant it but then we can't I can't just, you know, donate the labor to take care of it for, you know, seemingly forever. So right. um, I think, and then I think when I spoke to Susan says, uh, Cohen, she was kind of, she had kind of said, you know, it's, you know, it's more important that the infrastructure is taken care of and, you know, the landscaping is kind of secondary. Um, so I know that I, when I had spoken to her, um, I, I think realistically the only thing that if we wanted to do any other sort of updates to this site would be to um, have Huguenot Street, like historic Huguenot Street kind of jump in and take mm -hmm. care of it so you know maybe i can just chat with them but in the meantime the sign has held up beautifully over the over the year or i guess it's like getting cold yeah quite close to a year at this point since it was fourth of july when it started. yeah yeah right. so um it looks just as good as the day that it was put back so um i and I, I, when I passed by, I see a lot of people, you know, taking a second to read it. And I was like, oh, there we go. Um, so, but those are my updates pretty much. Thank you very much, Chris. Really. It's great. Let's, um, let's press on to item nine. Um, uh, I think the really significant one here is what's going on with the Lalo group. Um, Camilla, you um, did a little bit of, or maybe more than a little bit of digging on social media reactions. Do you, would you be willing to share some some observations? Well, uh, from what I read um, um, among the Facebook comments, the overwhelming majority of community members who commented on the project uh, are not very happy uh, about this. Uh, there are several issues that have been brought up, you know, the sewer, the water consumption, uh, 
the proximity to schools and playgrounds uh, and just the general, the traffic, of course, that's people are very uh, concerned about that. Um, and they just find it inappropriate, the whole concept. There are a handful of supporters, of course, but uh, I think the majority is not in favor of the project. Um, what did the supporters say? Well, uh, you know, it's kind of like a revital, it would revitalize uh, mm -hmm. new parts. But that can be argued because it might create a few jobs, but it, it may result in the loss of other jobs on Main Street and in the surrounding uh, uh, streets, you know, small businesses like bread, bed and breakfast could suffer a great deal. What would happen to you know, Luna next on the other side of the street? All the traffic, all the noise, all the uh, pollution this project would create. For years, nobody would be able to come down Main Street because of the traffic. Businesses on Main Street would probably suffer as well. These are just my concerns, but um, I think mm -hmm. I think the overwhelming sentiment is that this is not an appropriate project for that location. Tom, just a reminder that Misha Harnick is with us and also had some comments about this project. Terrific. I, um, I wasn't aware of that. Again, I don't have all the... Uh, Misha, welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't see myself, but that's okay. Well, I guess I cannot really add much more to what Camilla just said because even though I unfortunately am not yet on Facebook, um, but all the comments that she meant, uh, that she just said, is what I would, would be telling you that I'm also concerned about. I think it's a, I think that the whole thing is. Uh, um, Newport is a small community and uh, building a business park in the center of a tiny little town uh, have a fantastic idea that these people have. I don't think that it really is so um, appropriate, just as she said. So I don't think that I really, I had a much longer um, a comment, but it, it would be only repeating what she said pretty much. Uh, but I want to ask one thing in, in respect to that. So they want to do a hotel and a, a conference center. Even the conference center idea is we have we have SUNY Newports, which has a lot of um, you know maybe they are not aware of what everything is available around here. But my main comment to them is okay if you want to do something beneficial for the community, for the town. We know that there is a shortage of uh, affordable mm -hmm. which would accommodate people who build tiny houses. I mean, that's a wonderful project and many people will benefit from it, I think, if they have all this money. But who does it belong? Who does it belong to now, the, the, the area that they can do what they want to do? I read a little bit in the last week, I think it was, that the ownership was changing from one place to the other. Can you hear me? I'm getting some strange message here. So, I, I'm wondering if it's my connection or if everybody's having difficulty. Yes. yes. I guess. We can hear you, Misha, but it's breaking up a little bit. Yeah. That's strange. I, I've heard everything, though. I've been elected to uh, that. Okay, I will, um, I will speak slower. Maybe that will um, help you hear more. Basically, I close with saying, just forget this project and do something to accommodate 
the people who uh, want to live here and work here but need affordable housing. And if I may ask something on a totally unrelated um, subject, when I heard you talking about steward and to other spaces, what is going to happen to the old steward? What's going to happen to Agway? What's going to happen to just above? Isn't there something that should be done to these places, if nothing else, at least to remove the signage? <laughs> Um, well, that uh, I can take up the last uh, question and tell you what I know. Um, at least a year ago, when we, a year plus ago, when we were discussing with stewards, their plan was to sell the property. I don't know if they intended to uh, level the structure and dig out the tanks. I kind of think maybe, but their their plan was to sell stewards. Um, or the, the current original stewards. Um, as for Agway, that's been purchased by Kim Lim Propane. And I don't know what their intentions are, but I'm sure the sign will come down at some point. And uh, Misha, I didn't hear the third one that you asked about. Uh, just a buck, which was the store on in, in ShopRite Plaza. Oh. Next to its they, they uh, moved that, about three years ago, they moved away, and it still says just the buck closed. Uh, <laughs> um, that's that's in the town. Yeah, that's uh, in the town. Um, yeah. So, the, the old steward, does it belong, is it part of the village or the town? Uh, the old steward says town, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think it's just over the line. Uh, I, I don't, don't know how. Go ahead, but you don't know. I'm having difficulty hearing. I don't know if you people are aware of the fact that the village board decided they want to build a skateboarding park or bowl in the Hasbro Park, which also many people are opposed to. Again, I don't know about the social media, but from people I spoke to, Yes, there's a lot of opposition to do something like this in Hasbro. Can you think of any other place in the village, or even in the town, where this would be more appropriate? Uh, at the skate park? Yes. Um, I don't know that I can think of a spot, but I do, I mean, personally, I support the idea of a skate park, so I don't know if that's um, a conflict of interest of some sort. Um, no. Oh, you, you are being cut off. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I mean, personally, I think that that it is a good place for a skate park. Um, I think that would just, if anything, make that into a really well-rounded recreational part. I don't agree with the Lalo group plan, um, just because I don't, I agree with you wholeheartedly on, you know, how, how many luxury apartment complexes can we add in a year? is becoming the, the new hashtag trending. You know, everyone everyone wants a luxury apartment complex now in the village. And that is really not a good place. I'm looking at the pictures of this, the proposal, or the, pro, the proposed images. One, I don't even know, I, I don't know where they intend to have parking for this. Underneath. To, what'd you say? It's it's planned for underneath. Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, that would just be like, I mean, it kind of looks like a nail in the coffin of old faults. Um, just because 
this is not, I mean, it just seems like yeah, a, a, a proposal for the sake of a proposal or a project for the sake of a project. Right, right. It's a right. money grab. Right. Let's, let's, yeah. let's call it what it is, you know? Yeah. It's, yes. It's, it's, it's to make money and it's not to contribute, you know, I get that a lot of people are coming to the area now and that's fantastic, but right? there are people, you know, we don't just like come out of a bush when everyone, you know, to serve people. I work at Huckleberry and they treat us as if, you know, I'm here just to serve. So I, I think we need to, as a town, kind of decide, are we a tourist destination or are we a town? Um, and I think there's a good medium, but this looks <laughs> way past that. <laughs> I mean, this is like, I mean, it would definitely affect the, the, the view, right? Yes. Oh my goodness, yeah. indeed. Yes, you are at the, at the top of Long Avenue and you see nothing else but this building instead of trees and you wouldn't even smoke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I read your letter and I honestly agree with, I, I, I pretty much agree with everything. You know, we have a lack of affordable housing and, and we're gonna, we're gonna put in a luxury uh, apartment slash hotel in the middle of a place that, I mean, I can't even, I just get a headache thinking of the traffic down Platakill and then that p and intersection, <laughs> which is already like- It's already a bad intersection. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I think that, um, we should probably uh, move towards some kind of action, given that this is an ongoing discussion for the planning board. Um, yeah. Camilla and I attended the meeting on the 1st of June, um, and they really just kicked it back to the developers, right, Camilla, um, for more detail. I mean, at this point, there's still very, very early in the process. And so if the HPC wants to sound a note of caution and maybe point to social media and newspaper comments, maybe we should vote to do that um, so that at the next planning board, they have something from us. I agree, Tom. You know. I, 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 yeah. I think that the, the village um, really needs to look at what they want to see the character of New Paltz be or become, because I think it will change really quite radically if this proposal goes through. And I, I'm not sure that the general public um, and all the people that live in New Paltz um, are happy with that or would be happy with that. And I'm also not sure that it really will benefit uh, New Paltz in the long run at all. No. That's, that, that's a personal opinion, but I think no, they I need to make a decision of what they want to see New Paltz become. Um, you know, do we want it to be a quaint historic town that draws lots of tourism um, or are we going to become another Westchester? Yes, and everybody exactly. Just yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I mean, as you it's, said, it's power grab, money grab, yes. And yeah. it's interesting that it's, this is maybe the third time that they came up with the proposals over the years. It's at least <laughs> the second. Don't they get the message? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, let's, Let's move to some action. How does a memo um, sounding a general note of caution about appropriateness, some of the things that Camilla mentioned, water, sewer, pollution, traffic, um, the unclear benefits to the community. I mean, we have to bear in mind that our, our purview is, is limited. We're not the planning board, we're the HPC. Um, so, strictly speaking, we should be talking in terms of architectural appropriateness, but we don't know what this project would look like. We haven't seen any drawings. We just know that there's a lot of mass. And if we um, go back to what Camilla was talking about originally, and we can talk about community appropriateness. Right. 
And, and this is where um, a village planner would have a role to determine whether a project of this size is appropriate within the community, appropriate within um, economic parameters, uh, whether it's uh, whether it fits in within our community, the needs of the community, whether it's viable 20 years from now. And we don't have a village planner who would determine all these things. Who is looking at this, I wonder? Well, it's, it's the planning board, it's the village board, and now it's starting to be us. But that's a very good point, Camilla. The but you know, that the planning board's uh, role is just to uh, look at technical aspects right. of a project. Right. Just because zoning is allowed, or, or zoning is, uh, is uh, allowing a certain type of project to be built, it doesn't mean that it's appropriate. Right. If you look at you know, Main Street, it's right, it's going to be right next to yeah. this project. Main Street is a historic uh, it's on the federal and 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 state uh, historic uh, De designation. List. Designation. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's very true. Some of the buildings have the mass and the size that this project is proposing. Yeah. If anything. If they want to build something, I think it would make a lot more sense to build something that people who are already in the village can go to, can walk to, without adding to the traffic, without adding to uh, additional strain mm -hmm. on our limited resources. And um, yeah, I don't no, know. No, no, that's good. I've made all those notes. Um, and also, when they completed the, the seeker review. I looked at everything. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions still remain and uh, there are some very ambiguous answers in my opinion. And we have two locally designated historic properties across the street from this proposed project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, that they didn't even mention. Is there any incentive for this project or is it all just kind of a, pro a proposed thing that? Well, I think when they first, when they first uh, came up with this uh, proposal, it was mentioned that Arcos is going to use a lot of the offices and the conference facility and the hotel. And it just seems to me that the whole project is kind of circling around Arcos, which is, according to their website, is a corporation from Ohio. So I'm not sure how that serves the new prices. Yeah. They probably never were in New York, so they don't know where all this would be built and the effect of it. It's and you know, if Arcos wants to create jobs and they need more offices, they can sell this location, buy something bigger somewhere else. They can still create jobs. They don't. They are not married to this location. Why is it so important that this be built at this particular location? Mm -hmm. The real estate market is hot right now. They could get a ton of money for that property. It's right. <laughs> in a central location. Yeah. Well, I, I, Camilla, I think the, the limits of our authority, I mean, we really can't yeah. urge people to sell land. I mean, we just can't do that, but we do have authority to speak to appropriateness. Yes, I know. I'm, my, my, I, the reason why I said this is because the argument that they want to create jobs falls flat to me. I think the village board needs to do, uh, or the planning board should do some research into how many jobs these larger projects really pull in um, in the long run. And you know, from what I have seen and what I have read, 
is that they do not uh, pull in long-term, they do not create long-term jobs. So a lot of the jobs that are created are the building when they're first constructing it. A lot of times they're pulling in their own people and um, if you look at some of the larger projects around the state, there's a lot of evidence that shows that there's not um, a creation of new jobs for local people. There's maybe some new jobs for out, you know, people that are coming in and moving and creating to the congestion of the area. I think that that's certainly true, Sue. Um, I suspect that Arco's answer would be, you know, they're talking about very high skilled, high paying jobs and, you know, communities typically want those. Um, but I think we should, I think we should be modest about what our role in this is and stick to um, some of the things that have been mentioned, right? So unclear benefits to the community a lot of mass, those, those structures are really, really big. Um, traffic, um, appropriateness architecturally, appropriateness to downtown. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to draft something. Um, I don't know when the planning board's next meeting might already have happened. I think it would have been, uh, was it on the 15th? They didn't speak about it. I was, I had been, they didn't speak. They did not. Okay. That's because the applicant was told to go do a lot more planning. So we have some time. It'll be another two weeks before they meet. Uh, and I will circulate uh, a, a fairly direct memo about this, just expressing an array of concerns um, coming from the HPC. What may also be uh, maybe useful, advisable is, all right, so we as a village are telling you, we don't want you here for all these obvious reasons, but there is this piece of land, which is really, I think, totally unused. Um, whoever it belongs to, if they could turn it into a nice walkable park with maybe, you know, some, um, areas where you can have a picnic and so on, clean it up. That may be much better for the community to have a bigger park right in the center of the town of the village. I think no question, but that, I mean, we're up against private property. Yeah. The village doesn't own it. Who does it belong to? Who does it belong to that that person wants to sell it for and turn it into this monstrosity. Well, I can I can mention that too. But uh, you know, the way private property works is uh, that's a hard sell. Very um, true. But private property has to get to the planning board and get all the permits and so on. And yeah. Make sure that well, I I agree, Misha. I think that is where we we have to operate that this, um, you know, we don't dispute uh, Lalo's right to own the property, but we can dispute the appropriateness of the project. So let me uh, suggest this, and I'm, I'm just thinking about time, which um, is passing, uh, especially for me. Uh, we're closing in at three in the morning for me. So um, I will draft a memo uh, concerning PB 2007. It'll be pretty broad, but I think I can include the points that have been raised. I'll circulate that in the next couple of days with the idea that go to the planning board and maybe also to the village board so that they're aware that we have a set of concerns. And these are concerns that we've seen articulated in social media and in the newspaper, um, including your letter, Misha. Um, is that good? Is that good with everyone? Yes. Okay, so we'll all have a chance to comment on it before it goes further. Um, in terms of other things, um, let's see. I just wondered if anybody is aware whether anything was discussed um, for PB 2014 Chestnut Square 
which was on last week's agenda of the planning board. I did not um, attend that meeting. Does anybody know whether it was discussed? Okay. I couldn't get there. Um, I was there for a while, but they, they were in executive session for a good long while. And by the time they came out, I really couldn't stay on any longer. Okay, well, we'll have the minutes soon enough. Um, actually, Valerie, could that be a, um, an action item to ask for even the draft minutes mm -hmm. so that we can just stay on top of that issue? Yeah, I expect we'll get them, but I'll, um, I'll reach out to Alana. Thank you. Actually, it was Thank Ariana you. who took the minutes of that meeting. So that's right. Because there was a substitute. Yeah. Yeah, they never got a ready a proposal at all. Not at all. They they did not address it. No, not at all. Okay. All right. We have our answer then. Right. So not even. Oh, we are sorry that we didn't get it on. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, it may be. Yeah. Um. Did they discuss Mannheim Muse, uh, Nisha? That's 52. Um, what they discussed was... That's the... Yes, sort of, yes. I think that that's why it started so late because for almost two hours there were consultants in a, an executive session. And I oh think my. most of it was, yeah, it was a horrible meeting. <laughs> oh. Um, I was asked whether we had sent a memo, and we had, but um, the chair of the planning board uh, had forgotten or mislaid it. So they do have, they have our comments, which I shared with you a month ago. Um, is there anything else? As I look over the other planning board and CBA applications, I don't see anything else that's really um, germane or current or that we can do anything about. Does anybody see anything else under number nine? I don't. And seeing as how it is approaching 3 a.m. in certain time zones, <laughs> uh, would you be willing to entertain a motion to um, finish business and adjourn the meeting? You, it's been a long day for you, I would imagine. It's been a long day. Um, I think I, I would. But on the budget report, I don't actually have Val. Do you have, I, or we could do this in two minutes, Stephen. Okay. Probably. It's, it's for you. I'm, yeah. I'm in Eastern daylight time here. Um, um, I'll have to date no, I'm afraid I forgot to post it here. So. Let, let's, let's, let's kick it to next month. It's not yeah, going to change anything. No, I mean, it, let's see. It would have been the last month of the fiscal year would be the report okay. we have. And we kind of know where we were at in terms of expense. Yeah, and nothing much changed. Mm -mm. You know what, I think maybe the burning issue that we should have, I was gonna ask if maybe next month, Camilla, you wouldn't mind um, reporting on some of the camp training. I think you were the, the, the only responsible one. I know I wasn't. <laughs> no, um, I tried. Uh, even though it sounded like a great idea at the time. Camilla, would you be willing in July to give a report of highlights yes definitely i made some notes so i uh, okay i just, really appreciate your doing that just something very quick about the the training um there was a gentleman there from uh, the town of newburgh and they have uh design standards he was talking about that and how beneficial they are uh oh good um, you know overturning certain zoning uh requirements so i was wondering if maybe we could reach out to him his right. name is Peter Hansen, just to get some pointers about uh you know what their procedures were to to include design standards in their code and how, how they that would be great um do you have his email contact i don't but uh, i guess i can look it up see if i can find it uh, i think that would be great i feel like i've heard his name before um, if Camilla, you could introduce us by email, I, I would be glad to, you know, start a conversation and see what he can tell us because that feels very germane as we try to form a, formulate our own 
procedures and standards. And we could definitely have a lot more say in what's yeah. happening such a, in such a close proximity to you know, our important historic resources. Yeah, yeah. And likewise, Newburgh had some amazing, has and had, had and has. Um, thank you. That would be great. Um, I think the last two items can be dealt with pretty quickly. Um, at the at the um, May meeting, there was um, general consent. I think that we can attempt a uh, carefully distanced in person July meeting. Uh, Chris, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's plan on that, everyone, and, and Valerie will. Um, I guess, get some direction on how we're supposed to broadcast it. So it would be in person for applicants and for the board, but the general public would still be um, remote. Um, Steve? Um, it's been a couple of years and I've never actually, I only uh, attended a meeting uh, to uh, apply. Um, is it still at Village Hall? I think that that's probably, <laughs> that's a great question. Yes. Um, okay. um, my understanding is that village board has um, voted to open it up again and maybe Bill could speak to this. Um, I also know from my conversation with Ariana today that there is equipment set up in the large meeting room that's available for use again as you were saying Tom for the members of the commission or other meetings and applicants um, and that's how we would um, get the zoom meeting up and running and 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 stream it over YouTube like we are tonight. Um, right now, there's only one set of equipment. It's only in the large meeting room. It's movable, but um, I could reach out to um, the deputy clerk and see if it's possible for us to, to use the large meeting room that night. It seems like that might be um, a little bit easier. Um, and yeah. I'd be happy to. And maybe better for our own distancing if we want to mm -hmm. maintain that. Sure. Um, so, Steve, there's lots of time, but Valerie will give you, I mean, it'll be one of the two rooms. and I'll uh, find my way. Yeah. <laughs> or I was thinking we could just move one of the fire trucks and, you know, set up there, but <laughs> probably not. And then uh, let's push membership discussion to July when we're face to face. My thinking was, um, as everybody knows, Chris would prefer to stay alternate. Um, Chris, we would love to keep you in any capacity that you're comfortable with. Um, and why don't we just carry that conversation to July when we, when we can see each other in person. I don't think there's any urgency to rushing to a new member um, when Chris is willing to attend, as Pat still is, by the way. Um, does that sound good, everyone? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, Stephen, back to that motion you had in mind. Uh, no objection to me. <laughs> I move that uh, we adjourn. I second, second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Tom. My, my pleasure. It's really nice to see everybody. I kept getting these little notices that you're under a thunderstorm watch till 9.30. So I'm telling you something I, you didn't even. We didn't even know that. <laughs> no. I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, actually, Boy, I love it's, thunderstorm. You're six hours ahead, but it's actually till um, it's just from now till eleven o'clock. Oh, okay. I just got right. one. I just got one on my watch. So yeah. Yeah. So that, like I happening. would love that because we've had since I since I landed we've had ninety plus days, like ninety five plus days. It's really hot. Nothing's cooling down. I would love a thunderstorm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but nothing predicted. Anyway, thank you everybody. It'll be great thank to you, see Tom. you on July nineteenth. And please look for two separate draft memos from me, one concerning uh, 130 Huguenot and the other concerning the Lalo group plan. Okay. Okay, great. Right. Great. Thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. Yeah. Valerie, Good thanks job. for arranging everything. Oh, sure. My pleasure. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Chris, take care. Welcome back. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Okay. Good night, everybody.
Good night. to get out <laughs> there is a thing at the bottom right i know it's oh. not showing it's, ah there it goes bye bye <laughs>